Hey guys, it's Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist in the Seattle area. I do medical, surgical, and cosmetic dermatology. I just got back from a Vegas conference, the fall clinical conference at the Wynn Hotel, and got some new updates, especially on an exciting product, a moisturizer by Cetaphil. Today, we'll be talking about peptide moisturizers, the peptide technology. What do I think about peptide moisturizers? Are they overhyped? Is there real science behind them? And because it's Halloween time, hope you guys had a great Halloween yesterday, a nice Friday for trick-or-treating, we're gonna be talking about zombie cells as well. Zombie cells, AKA senescent cells. So what are zombie cells or these senescent cells? Cells that are rapidly dividing, that are healthy, can go into a hibernation phase or even a zombie phase where they're just not dividing anymore. It could be influenced by age, stress, hormones, oxidation from sunlight, pollution. Those things can make your cells just be party poopers. They don't die and just get cleared out by your body, but they hang around at the party and they can release some Debbie Downer cytokines and markers that will actually age your skin. There's technology out there where you're clearing senescent cells or you're down-regulating senescent cells, markers for senescent cells. And so we'll be talking about a few brands and also peptide moisturizers in general that aren't necessarily working on these zombie cells or senescent cells, but will actually keep the party going by increasing collagen and happy players that are more the life of the party and not Debbie Downers, okay? So if you look at the senescent therapies, the senescent cells and you wanna clear them out, the one I've talked about the most would be the One Skin OS1 peptide. This brand has been founded by PhDs. I got to see the data and it's very impressive. So they've made moisturizers, the OS1 peptide face, the body moisturizers, they have good sunscreens, they even just came out with a body SPF and also a lip SPF as well. So by having this OS1 proprietary peptide, you're gonna increase collagen production, but you're also gonna clear out the old senescent cells that are just hanging out, not really adding much fun to the party. It down regulates those senescent markers. And by doing that, you improve the epidermal thickness and reprogram your tired cells and actually maybe increasing collagen production in this way as well, besides being a cell signaler and telling your fibroblasts to make more collagen. So if you have crepey skin, if you're getting crepiness around the elbows, the knees, the decolletage area you wanna work on, I think this peptide technology is quite nice and I love having it in my sunscreens. That zinc oxide base is quite lightweight. They made a tinted sunscreen that I like and also their body sunscreen is also a nice find. This is zinc oxide base, but you are paying for that technology and the price point is higher. I pulled up a recent paper that they did and reconstructed 3D skin models. The OS1 increased epidermal thickness, improved expression of barrier and repair genes. And thus when I talk about that it reprograms the senescent cells, they become healthier, more functional cells and thus don't kill them, but just help them behave younger. They won't evaporate them, but they'll just reprogram them to start behaving in a younger state. Now the next technology that I wanna talk about, I was meeting with Galderma at this Vegas meeting and they've talked about their hydrating and firming cream. I don't have a jar with me right now, but I remember being first introduced to it seven months ago when I was at the American Academy of Dermatology meeting in Orlando, Florida. It is great to talk to the PhDs at this meeting. They were able to show me their results to their studies. Now looking at the ingredients in it, it's interesting they have Centella Asiatica paired with mandelic acid, which you guys know is an alpha hydroxy acid. It's derived from almonds and it gently exfoliates the skin, but it's in micro doses here. So it's not a true exfoliant where you're really getting a lot of cell turnover, you're getting some cell turnover, but they've found that by pairing mandelic acid with Centella Asiatica, you're able to get the synergistic effect with barrier repair and also down-regulating the senescent cells. So by preventing the stress pathway where you get an impaired skin barrier leading to senescence, we're gonna have a nice happy skin barrier with Centella Asiatica, which we talked about before being a nice product. Part of the Centella extract is Madacasticide and I love Cicoplast Balm by La Roche-Posay. Great for wound healing and they even had a few limited studies and evidence on it working for stretch marks or stria, Centella Asiatica, maybe Madacasticide. So I'm really intrigued by this tiger grass ingredient and we've seen it in nice brands like Dr. Jart and a few others that were really pulling that from the Asian beauty world and bringing it into the Western side. 
And so it's really nice to see it in the Cetaphil trials where they're looking at it objectively and hopefully we can expand it to even bigger trials. But they found that it is taking its wound healing capabilities and working on barrier repair and decreasing senescence there. And so we're seeing improved skin thickness, less crepiness of the skin, especially of the neck, the extremities like near the elbows and knees. So really consider this technology and I hope to do a dedicated YouTube video just on that jar. Talking about traditional peptide moisturizers, do they work on senescence? Not really. They are cell signalers typically. So you get the palmitoyl pentapeptide 4, tripeptides 1 and 7. Those you can find in say Olay and Elastin, Drunk Elephant. I've talked about Skin Fix, Triple Lipid Peptide Cream, also Naturium's Multi-Peptide Moisturizer, Neutrogena's Collagen Bank Moisturizer as well. And they also have a nice lightweight sunscreen version of that. And I sometimes will mention a higher price point, Neostrata's Neck Peptide Cream Moisturizer, which is great just for this whole decolletage area. I don't talk about copper peptides too much. That is delivering copper in ways where you can use copper to cross-link your collagen, increase collagen production, versus you get cell signalers from these traditional, you know, peptides that will pretty much give the text instructions to your fibroblasts and skin cells to make more collagen in your dermis or second layer and thus help with fine lines and wrinkles. You guys know I love retinoids. So if I were to rate retinoids a 9 to 9.5 out of 10 in terms of anti-aging, how it can help with fine lines and wrinkles through collagen production, increased cell turnover, I would probably rate peptide moisturizers in general about a 7.5 to 8 out of 10. I don't think it's going to be nearly as good as a retinoid, especially tretinoin or tazarotene that's prescription, but it will be a nice supplement to the anti-aging routine. If you were to incorporate it into your routine, you're going to have an antioxidant serum in the morning after you cleanse your face, then apply, say, Neutrogena or Naturium peptide moisturizers over that and then follow up with a sunscreen with or without peptides. So it could be one skin sunscreen or just a regular sunscreen that's lightweight that you like. And then at bedtime, if you want to double up and do it again, I would do your pea size amount of your retinol, like say Olay or Rock or your Tretinoin, and then follow up with the peptide moisturizer to seal it in, but also get that additional support, whether it's removing senescent cells, the zombie cells, or telling your skin, giving it the text instructions to make more skin and stimulate those fibroblasts in the dermis. So with the evidence emerging, I wanna see more on peptides, finding new peptides that can help with barrier health, help with turning on old cells, zombie cells, but also looking at really powerful cell signalers in increasing collagen production and trying to get up to par with retinoids. Especially people who can't tolerate retinoids, it can be quite dry and irritating. Some people can only rely on antioxidant serums and their peptide moisturizer. So I do believe there's a good place for it. It doesn't mean that it's obsolete because it's not as good as retinoids. Definitely do recommend these things for my patients in their 30s and up. It does have a role for sure. So hope you guys have a nice Halloween, nice fall season, and wear your sunscreen still, especially on a sunny day. And I will see you guys for the next video. Please hit the like button. Please share down below in the comment section your favorite peptide product. Please share with your friends who are into skincare. And thanks for subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell notification and spending Saturday mornings with me. All right, take care guys. Peace.